In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a theme for the all new Adobe Captivate. So I was inspired to make this video as one of the very first videos that I was going to talk about with Adobe Captivate 12 or the all new Adobe Captivate, if you will. Um, when I saw one of the viewers of my YouTube channel struggling to manually change the fonts for their closed captioning line by line, slide by slide for an entire project. I thought, well, this person needs to learn about themes. So today we're going to do a bit of a deep dive into the theme builder that's built into Adobe Captivate 12. Okay, to build a custom theme, you need to start off with the project properties down here in the bottom right hand corner. So I'm going to click on that and that's going to show you this panel here. The section that we're concerned with today is this section right here called themes. And uh, you can, of course, import themes, which we'll do in a little bit. We can change themes. And you can see I've got the two default themes, plus a couple that I've been playing around with myself as I learn about how themes work in the new Adobe Captivate. Let's go ahead and edit this light theme that's built into Adobe Captivate. And then maybe we'll save it as our own custom theme for later. Some of the reasons that you might want to uh, create a theme is, let's say you work in an organization and there are certain brand standards that are required, like you use certain fonts, you use certain colors and so forth, and that needs to be consistent. And the reason to create a theme is so that you don't have to set up all of those fonts and colors and backgrounds every single time you create an e-learning course. The other advantage too is I can export, as you can see from the controls at the top here, I can export a theme and share it with my colleagues. In my case, I'm a freelance instructional designer. And when I build e-learning for my clients, it's often based on their brand standards. So I'll be spending a lot of time in the theme ed editor building themes for all of my clients here. So the controls across the top, we can export a theme once we've built one. We can import a theme that someone else has built for us. Cancel will just return us to the Adobe Captivate interface and apply will apply those changes to the current theme or to the theme that we're working with for this particular project. Down the left-hand side, you'll see there are five categories and uh, we'll go into a bit of a deeper dive into the UI components in a little bit. There are some subcategories there as well. And there'll be several columns in, in each of them. Uh, some are very generic and then of course to the more specific on the right there. So for starters, you have these nine default color palettes that you can use. There are some additional system colors that you can set. Uh, the specifics of that are mostly to do with uh, certain built-in functionality of Adobe Captivate. But the stuff that's really going to be your interest is this stuff up here. So you can set a series of colors that are appropriate for your brand. And uh, there's some really great tools out there that can help you identify them from websites. And maybe I'll put some of that down in the description below as well so that you can see uh, some tools that might be helpful to you. Next, of course, is the font palette. And this is the one that I'm probably most excited about. In fact, this was the feature that I really wanted to showcase because one of the viewers of my YouTube channel was spending a lot of time updating the Georgia font in their closed captions on a slide by slide basis. They were really struggling to make that sort of a default. Well, here's where you do that. In this case here, you'll see from left to right, I've got all my different text styles that are available. And this is going to be very similar to many other applications. So you have like questions, we've got, you know, what does a variable look like when it's displayed, subheadings, body text, all of this stuff is here. And along the top, you can see the fonts that are being used within this theme. 
So for example, if I did not want to use the Georgia font and it's being used throughout this project, rather than going heading by heading, body by body, text by text, I can select Georgia here and using the drop-down control, switch it to something else. So across the entire project, maybe I'm going to use one of the Google fonts, which is available. And that's kind of an exciting feature. So in addition to system fonts, which in my case is 295 different fonts, way up at the top here are all the Google fonts that are available to you as well. And perhaps I want to change you know, all of my Georgia fonts into DM Sans. It's a nice simple font and it's a sensory font, so it's not too ugly or anything like that. And in fact, if I want to change everything that uses the Arial font, again, to one of those Google fonts, which is nice for display on the net, we can pick something here. In fact, we'll just set up everything to be DM Sans just to keep it simple. Now in the middle here, we're seeing a preview of what all of these different fonts will look like. Clicking on them on the left here will highlight them. And then over on the right, you have all the individual formatting controls for those particular items. So let's work on the heading here. And we'll start sort of top to bottom here so you can see what's involved. So there's the font. If I wanted to change just this font, I could certainly do so from this dropdown and select anything I want for this. This is typically probably a title for slides and things like that. Uh, you can choose, of course, any of the available uh, formatting or sub formatting for that font. So maybe you want this to be bold 700. Um, some of the neat things that are available, certainly we have bold, italic, underline, strike through, which I believe is new, and also the ability to set up uh, this particular block of text to be, let's say, all uppercase or all lowercase, whatever it might be, regardless of what the user types. So this is quite useful. And new for Adobe Captivate is the ability to uh, change the character spacing. So if you want it to be, you know, a little tighter together, you can do that. Or you can spread out those letters quite a bit. Uh, maybe not that much, but <laughs> you can set it up to be something that's appropriate there. Uh, also, too, we have line spacing that can be selected here. No longer is it 1.5 or uh, 1.2. It's set up as a percentage. And that way, you can actually select a lower percentage and tighten up your fonts as well. One of my favorite new features in Adobe Captivate 12 is the, is the fact that you can have paragraph spacing. So you can set up maybe like a 2% spacing between the first and the second paragraph. And of course, there are the usual uh, alignment controls here and indentation. Now, notice, of course, that your desktop font is set at 120 points. Um, but tablet and mobile are grayed out. And that's, of course, because the theme editor wants you to preview these fonts using the preview controls here at the top here. So I can switch from desktop to tablet to mobile. I guess there's maybe valid reasons why you might switch it to landscape mobile, but uh, generally speaking, you can only set those values once and you'll notice that I can now adjust those. So let's say for mobile, I want it to be 70 points. For um, tablet, maybe I want it to be 90 points. And for desktop, we're going to drop it down to 100 points there. Now you have text color, of course. One of the things that you can add to text now is a text outline. Not to be overused, but certainly for something like a title, uh, you might want to add maybe just a white slight outline around the text just to make it pop. And this is particularly nice when you add a drop shadow to it as well. So if I select a, a color for that drop shadow, maybe something darker like that, it gives you kind of a stencil look here, which is kind of cool. And uh, I'm curious to see how this looks in HTML. Um, but, you know, you can really do a lot more customization with fonts than you were able to do in previous versions of Adobe Captivate. Let's go down to the image category now and take a look at that. These are image presets. 
it's not to say that you're always going to have an astronaut floating in space um, or you're always going to have a particular uh, appearance such as an overlay effect or a colorize effect or a, a lighten and, and or a darken effect. But these allow you to set up those presets in advance. So if you know that, you know, because of the branding that your organization uses, maybe all images are going to be in grayscale. So that's going to be something that you're going to choose or you're going to lighten them, but you're going to lighten them a whole lot, let's say. So we'll set that up for 100%. And there could be other defaults that you want to include as well, such as a border or a drop shadow for all the images that you use in your project. Next, we have slide background. Here's where you can select the background of each of your slides. By default, you'll probably want to stick with solid backgrounds, but linear gradient backgrounds as well as radial uh, gradient backgrounds are available. And you can customize those with colors of your choices as well. In addition, any of the content blocks that you add to your project, you can select what color they're going to appear as well. So perhaps you want to simply make them the same color as this background here, maybe the lighter version of it. There is a slight gradient there, um, but you can, you can certainly do that with the eyedropper tool and select what the background is so that your blocks match. The final section breaks down into additional subcomponents, and that's your UI components. I recall in time developing a course for a client, and their biggest concern was the buttons, the checkboxes, and the radio buttons. They did not use blue in their color scheme at all, and of course, in the old Captivate, blue um, radio buttons and blue checkboxes were the norm. Yes, there's a way you can kind of get in under the hood and change those things. But for most regular users, that's not something you want to do. So it's really nice to see that you can select, let's say, radio buttons, for example. And we can choose different things like what the fill color is in here. Uh, we can select the selected version. And maybe the, the fill color will be like gray instead of blue if the client doesn't want that or they have their own specific colors that they want to use as well. Also too, remember that if you're working with the normal setting here, there is this flow to all states option. This is useful if I'm going to change the font, which obviously we got rid of Georgia. So let's, uh, let's go find our DM Sans font here. And uh, if I don't have this selected, I would have to change all of these one by one. Instead, the easier solution is to make sure flow to all states is selected. And then of course, uh, you know, just change the font and then change it back to DM Sans. And now all of the different versions of the radio buttons match the font that you're using here. Uh, similar uh, controls and settings for checkboxes, buttons, of course, you can flow the font down to all the other states. Input fields, same thing here. We have all the different formatting tools available to you. Don't forget that with all of these UI components, you can individually set the font size for desktop, tablet, and mobile as well. And finally, there's the drop down here. Again, the same sort of controls are available to you. So once you're happy with your custom theme, and it's going to take a lot more work to, to really build a robust theme for your organization. I've just touched on the high points here. But you can then, of course, click on export. And then that's going to save your theme file as a CPTH file. And what's great about that is I can now share that with my colleagues who are also developing e-learning within the same organization. I can also save it for myself as a freelance uh, e-learning designer developer uh, so that I can import that theme again, let's say six months from now, when the client comes back to me with a need for additional training. So I can just save that to my desktop there. And then that's available for me to store with my client files or share with my colleagues. Then I can, of course, apply this to the current project and uh, either it's going to change any of those settings that I've already set or any new blocks, for example, like if I add a text block here, 
that happens to have, let's say, a title and a subtitle, you'll be seeing, of course, uh, the new font and the new colors and so forth uh, applied to this current project. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.